So this is now a week later. I took uh, Elizabeth home and then I brought Barry back because he wanted to not only see it, but he wanted to inspect it. And I trust his, uh, his judgment on these things. So we came back down just to for him to inspect the house. According to the contract, we have seven days uh, for inspections where we can back out of the contract if we don't like what we see. So here we are within seven days for Barry's inspection. So Barry and I spent about two hours going through the, the whole house with a fine tooth comb, crawled down underneath and everything else. Now before the inspection, my plans were to refinish the hardwood floors. Some of you had asked me about that. Barry had agreed to come down and help me refinish them and it probably only take us about two days to do that. And then I was planning on power washing the outside of the house and painting the outside and the inside and then eventually uh, replacing the vinyl skirting that goes around that's all torn up with uh, a weed, weed eater. That was the plan. And then we did the inspection. And many of you asked if we had had a, a housing inspector come in and do an inspection on the house before we put the, uh, the contract on it. Yes, we did have a housing inspection report right in my hand. And <clears throat> as a contractor myself, I'm about to go on a rant here <laughs> about housing inspectors. Now there are two different type of housing inspectors and I have to uh, differentiate between them, okay? There's the building inspector that comes out from the city or from the county during construction and inspects everything and makes sure everything's up to code and if he doesn't pass it, then you have to bring it up to code before you can get a certificate of occupancy so somebody can move in. Um, <clears throat> Barry and I had the building inspector involved in the uh, renovation that we just completed and we had no problems with him. We had a good relationship with the inspector and everything was cool. Then there's the other type of housing inspection or home inspection that many times the bank will require in order before they will write a loan. And because they don't, I, I can understand the bank doesn't want to write a loan on something that has a fire hazard in it or something like that. And that, that home inspector, that housing inspector, is a private contractor that generally the buyer pays to come in, inspect the house, and usually he's inspect, inspecting an existing house, not a new one. Though I've had home inspectors come in and, and, and uh, inspect my new house as well, which is uh, doesn't make sense. But So what I'm talking about here is the home inspector hired by the, generally by the buyer, as required by the bank. It has nothing to do with the county or the city. If you're a housing inspector, I apologize in advance because there are many good housing inspectors, but from my perspective, there are also a lot of housing inspectors who are either incompetent or lazy or inexperienced. They just don't know what they're talking about many times. And I say that from the perspective of a contractor, if you watched the renovation house that Barry and I did, you know that when I build things, I do it right. And I build it to uh, to code, so it passes all code. Well, it wouldn't get a certificate of occupancy if it didn't. But, uh, so everything is done correctly. And then when I sell the house, I'll, the buyer will have a building inspector come in, and many times the building inspector will pick it apart and it's just little things that are his opinion of how things should be done differently than the way that I did it. it has nothing to do with code because everything I do passes code. So then he puts that in his report. Now this report is not for uh, the you know the county inspector. This is for the bank. So if he puts it in the in his report, basically then I have two choices. I can either fix it the way he says it should be done, or my buyer can't get a, m a mortgage or I can just refuse to do it and lose the sale. So I'm sorry, but I don't work for the inspector. He just doesn't have the right. As long as the county inspector passes the quality of my work and it's all code, I don't see that a housing inspector has the right to come in and tell me to do this and this and this differently. 
I don't work for him. So I have already had a problem with, with housing inspectors. I, I hate them when I found out that they're going to inspect some of my work. But now from a buyer's perspective, yes, there was an inspection done on this house by a home inspector. Um, I didn't pay for it um, because as you will see, I don't trust them. Um, so I wouldn't ever order that unless a bank required it. This was an inspection that was done by a previous buyer. Actually, the house went under contract once before and then it fell through because of uh, financing issues of the buyer. But th that buyer ordered a, a home inspection and I was able to get a copy of it. The inspection did tell us a few good things. It told us that the uh, septic system had been completely redone in uh, 2020. It's all overgrown now with a nice lawn, so I wouldn't have had any way to know that unless I went to the county and looked for inspection reports and things. Um, what else? It also told me that the electric uh, panel, where all the circuits are, circuit breakers are, had been uh, upgraded just recently in 2022. So it did tell me some good things, but it had glowing reports about the house. It didn't find anything wrong with it. However, Barry and I went down there and like I told you, we, you know, we crawled down underneath and we found some real problems underneath of the bathroom. So if you look here at the bathroom, you see the shower stall here and the controls for the shower are over here on the left. You can't see them behind the curtain. But this wall on the left backs up to the kitchen. So in the kitchen here, the shower controls are right about here and there should be an access panel here to get in there to be able to do repairs or, or whatever. There is no access panel here. There never was. The entire thing is finished over with really nice looking Formica on the wall. And uh, bottom line is there's a leak back there in the shower controls and it's just a tiny little leak but it's been leaking for a long time there is an access panel down here underneath of the uh, counter or inside the cabinets but it's low so i can access the shower drain from there but i can't access the the water supply lines uh, and that's kind of <clears throat> redundant because i can access the drain from underneath anyway so Bottom line is the water has been leaking for a long time now, so there is a section of wood underneath, a section of the main beam that is completely rotten. As you can see here, this is a picture of the section of rotten beam with a screwdriver sticking right straight through it. That's how soft it is. Now this is in a place under the house where the crawl feet is about three, three feet tall, very easy to crawl into. And if you crawl under there and look up, it's very obvious uh, that this is a bad spot. So what happened here with the home inspector, with the house inspector? He must not have crawled underneath or he would have seen it. So what's the deal? Is he incompetent or just lazy? This is a major issue that should have been discovered and reported by the home inspector and he didn't. Now it's not the whole beam it's only about a four foot section, but it's gonna to have to be replaced. And it's, uh, this is not on a permanent foundation, it's on piers. So the piers are about eight feet apart, so, and the four foot section of rotten stuff is in the middle. So I'm gonna to have to replace that eight foot section of, of main beam that sits on top of the piers. Um, also, because there's no access to get in there to fix the leak, and also, I'm not completely sure how much rot there is actually underneath of the shower itself. I'm going to have to remove the shower stall. That way I can do everything properly, make sure all the wood is replaced. Any mold that's in there is gotten rid of, and I can certainly do that. That's not a problem. And then when we put in the new shower stall, I'm going to put the controls over on the right instead of on the left. That'll do two things. Um, It'll just make easier access to get in into the toilet. I'm sorry. It'll just make easier access to get into the shower, past the toilet, and, and to get to the controls easily. Then it'll also put a, I'll be able to put a uh, access panel in the bedroom behind the controls over on the right hand side. So it'll really be much better. Um, 
So now for someone who is not a contractor, you may look at this and be absolutely overwhelmed by it and turn the house down. But if you know Barry and I and the abilities, the contracting abilities that we have, you know that this is really no big deal for us. I used to make my living for many years doing this very thing. And Barry's going to come, he was already going to come down and help me with the floor. So he said that he'll come down and spend enough time that we can get this bathroom completely redone. And with the two of us working, it's not going to take more than four or five days to get it done. It's not, it's really not that big a deal. However, if we were going to hire somebody else to do it, it would probably cost us $15,000 because there's more uh, cost involved in the labor than there is in the, uh, the materials. The materials we estimate we can do it for probably between 2000 and 2500 depending on what type of new shower stall we get to put in there. So there's that. Also, when I was there the first time, the electricity was not on, so we could not um, test the HVAC, the heating and air conditioning. This time the electricity was on for inspection, and we found out that when we turned on the HVAC, the heat works, the air conditioning does not. So there were two major issues with the house. One is the leak in the under the shower, and the other is the HVAC not working. So we made a counter offer because I remember I had seven days to inspect and then back out if I didn't want it, want it. We were within that seven days and so I went back and made a counter offer and I told them what the problem was. They didn't even know about the issues. Showed them the pictures with the screwdriver sticking through the beam and all that. And I made a counter offer for them to take an additional $15,000 off of the price because of that and also the HVAC. Hopefully the HVAC is just some issue with the control, the computer, or a solenoid or something in there, and it's not going to be have to replace the whole thing. <clears throat> they came back and agreed that uh, they would actually get the HVAC fixed, so I won't have to mess with it. That's that's going to be fixed, and then they agreed to take five thousand off of the price for the repairs uh, under the shower. So we debated that for a little while, but really that's no big deal because it's not going to cost us that much to fix it. And then it's going to cost a week of our labor time in order to do it. So we went ahead and accepted that. So that's where we stand. Um, we had already offered them less than they were asking, and then they took an additional 5000 off so that we could fix the shower. And they agreed to fix the, uh, the HVAC, the heating and air conditioning. So now, I'm, actually, I'm not actually going down until after Christmas. Now we, we haven't closed on the house yet. That'll be in a few days. We're not going down until after Christmas, and when we do, Barry will be coming down, and we will be fixing the, the shower uh, in the bathroom there, and hopefully by then the AC will already be going. And then Barry and I will refinish the, the hardwood floors. I think they'll look really nice. Um, even though I'm, I'm not a fan of hardwood floor, floors, I much prefer carpet. Many of you in your comments have convinced me that in Florida, carpet could be a mold problem. So I'll go with the hardwood floors. And then, I, like I said, I plan on repainting the entire house inside and out, and then we should be ready to go. So, um, yeah, inspectors. <laughs> Don't like them. But as you can see, it's going to be workable. It's going to, we have a fix, we have a plan. And so we're moving forward with it and we're still very excited about it. So there's two other things I need to mention. Um, so that's the plan for us to go down. I'm going to do the floors, the paint and fix the bathroom. But there's this, I just recently injured my knee. I'm on crutches. I can't put any weight on my on my leg at all. So, how's that going to play out? I don't know. Uh, we're not going down until after Christmas, and then we'll be there for several months. So, you know, I could put this off by several months to see if my knee improves. Um, Barry does have the ability to do the whole thing by himself. He's done that many times. I hate to put that on him, but uh, that would be a possibility as well. So how am I going to do all this with my knee? I don't know. We're just going to have to play it by ear and see how it goes. Also, the finishing the floor and painting the walls is not critical. We can move a few pieces of furniture in without doing that, and then that can be done at a later time. The only thing that's really critical is fixing the bathroom. 
The other issue is um, Elizabeth being in the house while we're doing that work because I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming that there's mold in the rotten wood down underneath of the of the shower. And removing that mold is not going to be an issue because we will be removing the rotten wood and most of the mold goes with that. And then any that will still be left, we can treat it all and uh, take care of the mold. I'm not concerned about the mold at all. The problem is Elizabeth can't really be in the house while we're doing the work if there's mold in the, in the air. Also, if I can paint the inside of the house, it's not good for her with her lung issues to be in those paint fumes. So basically while we're doing this work, she can't be in the house. So what are we going to do? Well, actually, last spring, like eight or nine months ago, we rented an Airbnb in the area because we knew way back then that we were going to be doing this, that we were going to sell the renovation house. That's why we built, did the thing so we could get the money to buy this house. So we knew way last spring we were going to do this. So we rented an Airbnb for two months for January and February. And the plan was that we were going to go down, stay in the Airbnb and take our time and look around and buy a house during that time. Well, obviously we jumped the gun. We found this, this house that we really liked. So we bought it a month early, but now we've still got the Airbnb and it's, it's prepaid. And if we try to cancel, we would only get half of our money back. Uh, anyway, so, we're just going to take the Airbnb. We're going to stay in the Airbnb for, for the whole time, the two months that we're down there. That'll give me plenty of time to, to do whatever I need to do in the house uh, without Elizabeth being there. And uh, yeah, that's going to work out well. Like I said, it's already paid for. We can't get most of that money back anyway. So that's the plan. We'll go down. We'll stay for January, February in the Airbnb, do all the work in the house. We may not even move in this year. I don't know. It just depends on a lot of issues. Oh, and also, um, you know, I in the last video when we were house hunting, I made a comment in almost every house that there's no dishwasher here. And several of you, in fact, many of you said, why do you need a dishwasher? Several of you said, I've never had a dishwasher in my entire life. <laughs> well, I have. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's why we need a dishwasher. Elizabeth has pretty severe psoriasis on her hands, and she just simply can't wash dishes. Um, she can't even rinse them off to put them into the dishwasher because her her hands will will react severely to that So for years now, I've been doing the dishes uh, which means I'm the one that um, Washes off all the dishes puts them in the dishwasher and then I clean the counters and I clean the stove and all of that after every meal um, So she can't do the dishes I don't like doing the dishes. We have room for the dish dishwasher, so why not? It's going to cost us, you know, what's a dish dishwasher, 500 bucks. And in this house, there are uh, three different options, four different options, actually, three different options of where we can install one permanently, or we could get one of those uh, portable ones that you just hit, hitch up to the sink faucet and go with that. So we will eventually be putting a dishwasher in there. Probably not this winter when we go down because we have enough other things to do that I'm not going to worry about, but that would be for next year when we go down, we'll put a dishwasher in there and I'll be very happy for that. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Live simple, live free. You be blessed.